Hi, this is Nikki, and I'm here to share messages that I get from the Spirit and from all of our higher selves that are all on this journey to love and to reunite with our twins in this lifetime. And um, today I'm going to um, talk a bit about basically when, it, when you think you're coming into your union and all of the messages, all the signs, all the synchronicities, everything um, kind of leads you to think that. And then what happens, a curveball comes in <clears throat> and your twin says something that sends you completely off the track and you think, okay, this can, you know, what is going on, right? And so, um, for example, I'll just relate it to my situation um, so that, you know, basically there's a bit of an example. So basically through the years of my, me and my twin, there have been certain significant times where you know, basically the signs of synchronicities are completely off the scale. And then um, there'll be something that happens that makes you, and you, so it leads you to think that you're coming into your union. And then there's something that happens that completely throws you. For example, um, there have been a number of things through my journey, but basically um, one when he said that he was basically with somebody else um, and I wasn't aware of that at the time. Um, but it was to be in an open relationship and, you know, basically have many partners on this stuff. Uh, second time was when um, he said to me that he was buying a house with this uh, with his partner. And again, that kind of threw, completely threw me because I thought it was like more of a business arrangement than a, you know. And the thing is, is that he said, oh, it's not yet, though, <laughs> as if that was kind of fine you know that kind of childish boyish kind of way of looking at things and then another time has been when he said that he was having a vasectomy because my guidance had always told me that we're going to have children together and so I'm um, hearing that really threw into question all my guidance and everything and then more recently again um, is uh, the fact that he, when I last met up with him, which was just before, in November, I think, or October, he still said that he was buying, a, he was still planning on buying a house with his um, girlfriend. And so, of course, those sorts of things along the way have really, it. you know, we are human. Of course, that is going to make you question things and question the connection. But, um, and I know this has been happening for various people in, ver in, you know, in your own way. Of course, it won't always be the same, but in your own way, that type of thing will have happened, right? Where you just really think you're coming together and then, oh, the curveball, and then you're, it puts you into question again. So I did a, um, I just did a quick meditation or healing on uh, this this morning on that particular subject before doing this message to say what do you want me to share about it, and basically what I was showing, and it's definitely what happens because but if you think you're going on a basically if you imagine yourself going on a long hike up a mountain, uh, you don't have a map, you don't have any, uh, you don't have anything, right? And the mountain constantly peaks, so it constantly goes over, but you can never see the top, right? And so what they were showing me is basically when you walk up and you go over a peak like that and then your heart sinks because you've got another one to go over, right? And so your heart sinks for, you know, quite a while until you start to see the beauty of the journey again and you start to see all of the things that you can see from that higher vantage point on the mountain. And uh, so actually by the time you get halfway to the next peak, actually take, you're feeling totally fine and everything's beautiful and actually you're really pleased that that happened. Same things happen again when you get to the next peak and you can't see over the top, you think you've got to the top of the mountain. Same thing happens again, you get to the peak, you go over it and then suddenly you see that you're only, there's another one to come. And you go through that same roller coaster of emotions that your heart sinks, you thought you were at the top, you're devastated, you carry on walking because you are exhausted, but about halfway through, you start to see the beauty again. You start to see things from that high vantage point and you start to see the different landscape. And so again, you elevate and you are, you know, basically loving the journey. 
So you get to the next peak, the next thing happens and you get over that peak and again, the mountain is still going up. You go through that same emotion again, the sinking feeling, the exhaustion, the thinking, I just can't go on. And again, slowly, surely, step by step, you carry on, you carry on, you carry on. And about halfway through, again, you start to see the beauty and you start to see how amazing and of course nature and everything is talking to you and you're getting signs and messages from the universe and you're seeing the birds and you're seeing the uh, mountain goats and you're seeing everything and it changes your perspective again you're right you're rising up so you go over the next one same thing happens and this is what they're showing me there's this constant kind of journey that happens and the reason why it's happening is because every time that happens what will also happen is that the level of messages and guidance and messages from your twin will absolutely go through the roof because it is the universe and your twin say please stay on this path um you know the universe isn't sending you those messages to fuck with your head <laughs> you know it's sending you for them for a reason because it's like no 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 hang on hang on you are on the right path you are on the right path keep on going keep on going keep on going because eventually you get to the top of the mountain but if anyone's done any mountain climbing, you know that actually you probably don't even see the top of the mountain when you get to it because it's covered in clouds. You just have to keep going. And then suddenly before you know it, you're actually at the top of the mountain. And so it is that thing of expecting the unexpected, which we're always told, you know, put, you know, let the outcome go to the universe. You know, you, you know that you're going to come into union, but you need to release all expectations about it, which of course is virtually impossible to do but when they showed me the mountain analogy this morning that was so true because actually when you are climbing and the mist comes in you don't really know you're even at the top <laughs> when you are at the top right but you certainly know the journey up to it because you're kind of like am I there yet am I there yet am I there yet oh you're joking and that feeling you know you can all relate to that feeling of when your heart totally dips and your energy dips because you just think I'm deflated you know I'm deflated I'm exhausted I don't know whether I can go on you know but then what happens is then halfway through give it a couple of weeks and your energy picks up you start seeing you know the miracles again you start elevating in your own journey because of course you know a mountain climbing a mountain of course is um it's a team thing you do it with other people but ultimately it is an individual challenge exactly like um the twin flame journey so you're in a team with your twin and your twin is basically the guide rope guiding you up the mountain you know but ultimately it is down to you to to dig deep and do it right now so that is the message that I'm getting. So if anyone's going through that, I totally can relate. It's happening for a reason. Trust it. The other thing is, is that no coincidences, right? I've recently started doing a Buddhism. So it's basically, I wanted to do a course and I just found this, you know, at the Buddhist Centre in London. And uh, because I was just interested in the Buddhist faith to find out the history about the Buddha, Buddha because uh, once when I was with my twin, the Dalai Lama, we were at Glastonbury Festival, and the Dalai Lama literally drove past us because he was doing a sermon, um, basically he was doing a sermon on the uh, mount at Glastonbury, and it was about being happy. And uh, the crazy thing is, is that me and my twin were sat, it was like early in the morning, and me and my tw twin were sat in this cafe, and the Dalai Lama actually drove past us and waved at us. And I was like, oh my God, that was the Dalai Lama. He just waved at us. And so we basically followed him and went up to listen to him talking about being happy. Anyway, and so I, this course caught my eye about the learning Buddhism, basically learning about the history of Buddhism and also learning some Buddhist meditation techniques. So anyway, but they talked about the story of the Buddha. Now, the story of the Buddha is that he came from, he was a prince, he came from very, very um, uh, privileged background. 
and he not until he had a child and and a and um a wife at a, at an older age he decided to go out of the palace and he saw four things he saw saw an old person a sick person a dead person and a holy man and it made him think there must be something more right i want to reach enlightenment i want to search for enlightenment so he basically goes on this quest and he goes through various different things. Um, so he goes and lives in a forest. Ha ha. The, the synchronicities with the divine love crystal grid that I do are just crazy. But he goes and lives in a forest. He then goes through extreme austere, uh, basically, you know, self um, like starvation and various things to try and find enlightenment. But then he just remembers that he had this moment of enlightenment when he was a little boy, when he was sat underneath a rose apple tree. Again, the synchronicities are off the scale. Rose, divinity, flower of divinity, apple is the apple of Aphrodite. So again, uh, but anyway, he has this moment of flashback to when he was a child. So he goes and finds a tree and the tree that he sits under is the, Bod the Bodhi tree. It's the tree of wisdom. Now, when he starts to sit under this tree and starts meditating and starts to get to enlightenment, but as he's sort of raising up in his consciousness, there is a set of what they call Mara, who are dark energies, that, uh, demons, that come to try to veer him off that path because they don't want him to reach enlightenment, right? So does this sound familiar? The shadow side coming through, the fear coming through to try and pull you off track. So the first thing that came to him was an army of creatures which were ordered to attack him. And what happened was he used his consciousness and raised up his consciousness to see beyond them. And so they threw down their arrows and their arrows turned to flowers because you can change your, you know, obviously you can change your um, reality. So then the next thing that came was beautiful men and women trying to tempt the Buddha with food and with partying. Right, so all of these karmic situations, all of these karmic um, partying, drinking, whatever your twin is into, you know, these also are coming to veer them off that path, right? Um, and the Buddha had elevated his energy or consciousness, so he didn't go. Right, he wasn't. Um, he wasn't. Um, he wasn't tempted. But then finally, how the Mara tries to antagonize the Buddha is by saying, "And who do you think you are to be on this path?" Right. Again, making you question. Maybe this isn't for me this time. Um, maybe why do I think I'm the lucky one to get enlightened again? those sort of questions around maybe I it's not my time to be doing this on the earth, right? Again, very similar, if you think about these, to the path of what happens on the Twin Flame journey, right? No coincidences that I was led to this just yesterday. <laughs> so basically what happens in the end is that he, the earth goddess, comes to him and tells Mara and so basically what Buddha does is he touches the ground and he touches the earth uh, but when he's sitting by the tree. And when he does this, the earth mother comes to him and says to the Tamara that the Buddha is entitled to come to um, reach his enlightenment as he is a wise soul and an enlightened consciousness. So there you go that is the message so if you're going through these very difficult times then it's even more important to pay attention to the signposts because those signposts those signs for the new universe are exactly what you need to hear because everything else is not true right everything else is an, an illusion and in the buddhist faith you know that mara sending you know basically and this is the letter that wanted to come through after I did that course yesterday. So, you are the waterfall of love that flows through me. Every tr trickle of water, every dro drop of drew on the grass is how I feel about you. Refreshing, beautiful, sparkling, a wonder of nature, the simplicity of pure love. 
so that is the message so let the water cleanse you be in that waterfall of love and trust in your journey